Tax podcast. Thank you so much for spending some time with us today. I'm very, very excited because I have an old friend on the show today, Josh Reeves. Josh, how are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm oh, staying busy, staying busy. It's been a while. We were talking about it before we started recording. It's been a while since we've connected, talked. So, dude, it's been a long time. I think yeah. uh, since my senior year graduating, we played basketball together. Uh, well, I was. I was on the same team as you. I didn't. I didn't get a whole lot of playing time. Well, I was in eighth grade. No, you weren't. Senior. I thought you were a freshman year. My my senior year. No, they they moved me up to high no school way. my eighth grade year, and y'all, yeah, you and Jeremy and Brandon and all them. Yeah. You well, want to? You, you did you win a uh, champion state championship sophomore I, year? Uh, so the team did. I apparently one of my coaches told me that um, I should have been able to go to varsity. But I kind of had an attitude problem, and I yeah. there were some days I didn't. I worked hard, some days I didn't. Yeah. And I remember, um, like the last day of JV practice, they had some of the JV guys go to varsity, and my coach like came over to me afterwards, and he's like, "You should be on the varsity team, and if you had just worked hard the entire year, basically, like you could have." But oh, so man. no, I missed out on getting a ring and yeah. being on the bench. But uh, you know. It. But then we went to state the state tournament the next two years and we we didn't win but we came in second my senior year so yeah 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 good times yeah I remember that that uh, I guess it was your sophomore year when I had Seth and D and all those guys yeah dude I loved watching them play they were fantastic. that was crazy because yeah I was in sixth grade that year and I just remember going to all those games and all, the only thing you'd hear the whole time is Seth Skogan Seth yep. Skogan for two Seth Skogan yep. for three yep. I think he finished Mr <laughs> Basketball um, like, yeah I think so that year. Yeah. Uh, what What was crazy about that year is that we played in the championship um, against CSAS, which is a local school here, which we had played like two or three times in the yeah. regular season, um, and and in the and uh, one of the tournaments, I think the region tournament. And then we ended up playing it for the for the championship, and everyone knew like oh that yeah, it was over. It was going to be ours. Yeah, it was yeah. over. So I, yeah, I remember as soon as we heard about that, all of us in middle school were like, oh, we won the state championship. It's already over because. I mean, it wasn't even close when we played them in the regular season. It was like 30, 40 point no, blowouts. Blowouts. Yep, yeah. That's the right word. It was terrible. It wasn't it was, even close. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're reliving our glory days here. But um, so <laughs> basically, Josh, what we do before we get started, because I want to hear about your ministry, your testimony, all that good stuff. But before sure. we do any of that, I do something on here called the Big Three. And it's just three random, goofy questions just to kind of get the ball rolling. So, you ready? Oh, I know about it, man. I know, you know about it. I know about it. I heard, uh, I went listen to Chris Lofton's podcast that you did, and I was like, Oh, Dude. man, that, that was crazy to have Dude, him on. Real quick, how did you get him on your podcast? That's amazing. Uh, that, I mean, that's just all God. I mean, that's like, I feel like God has led me to do this, and it's just like the doors that he's opened for these people. Because, like, I remember watching Chris Lofton play with him. I was in like fifth grade. Like, yeah. skip, and I haven't told him in the episode, like, I skipped school one day because I wanted to watch him play in the tournament. Wow, and it was like, I, you know, I loved Chris Lofton. So um, originally I just DM'd him and, on Instagram. And, you know, of course he doesn't, he wouldn't even see it. There's, you know, and so I honestly, I just went to all his, uh, and I'm giving away my secrets here. I went to a bunch of his old pictures on Instagram and I just did the same message on all of his pictures. I'm like, Hey man, no I was like, Hey dude, you care to come on my podcast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he, he so hit me back. He messaged, he DM'd me. And he's like, yeah, man, I'd love to come on if we can work it out, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, 10, 15 minutes, you know, whatever you're willing to give, I'm yeah. thankful for for whatever, you know. And so, yeah, it, it's been cool because, and the thing about. <laughs> the strat, dude. It was crazy. And so um, that, it was just all God putting that in, opening that door. But then it was cool, too, because um, I was trying to get it to like how we're doing right now, you know, like for video, because I wanted to put it on YouTube. Yeah. But it wouldn't come up like. He couldn't get through the link. He, we couldn't figure it out. Anytime yeah. he tried to come through, it was putting him as he was like an audience member. So it was like he was going to watch the show. So I was like, Weird. I didn't know what to do because I'm not a real tech savvy dude. So yeah. I'm like, I guess we're just going to have to scrap it and do just all audio. And it took probably about 45 minutes just to get him on. So I was just like, I just told him after. I'm like, dude, thank you so much for, you know, being patient with me, putting up with all that, getting yeah. 
you know, just to get him on. And then, uh, yeah, whenever they announced the other day that he was going to get his jersey retired, I shot him a message. And I was like, he's not going to reply. And he replied back like that day. Oh, he was just that's like, cool. oh, man. Yeah, so I was like, oh, man, that's crazy. That's awesome. That's really yeah. cool. That's cool how you just got him on the podcast and he responded. I mean, that's just. So yeah, cool. that, that's why I, I feel like God is in it. Cause like I drive, I don't know if you've heard how much of the podcast you've listened to, but like I drive a truck for a living. Yeah. So there's like no reason other than God, like there's no other explanation for being able to get somebody like Chris Lawton on just a regular truck driver. You know what I'm saying? Show yeah. other yeah. than it was just all God. So. Dude, I'll say something to you that that uh, I actually said some, to someone yesterday because I was in a meeting with someone yesterday and uh, there's a group of youth pastors and youth people. And this guy was like, I know I'm not a youth pastor, but, you know, I'm just an intern. And he's so he started talking about how, like, God used him over the summer. And I was like, I'm going to say the same thing to you. Like, it doesn't matter your position or your pay scale, man. Like, whatever God wants you to do, like, that doesn't, um, like – equal your impact like you can have mm -hmm. a big impact on people and and just be a truck driver or yeah you know be whatever it doesn't matter so that's yep. just really cool how god working through you like that yeah yeah it's been a blessing yeah i equate it to like where you see an axe where you see john and and uh peter in the synagogue and it was like just by the, the way they were talking the people could tell that they were common and uneducated men but it says that, that people could tell that they had been with jesus and so yeah. it's like if you're if you're out there and you think you know I can't, I'm not qualified to do this or that, if God's calling you to do something, He's going to give you the boldness, He's going to give you the words, He's going to give oh, yeah. you the tools that you need to accomplish whatever it is that He's put in front of you. So just yeah. go after it. So yeah, hundred percent. Like just walk, taking steps of faith, walking by faith, man. That's all it is. Absolutely. So, sorry, you can re no, you can restart the segment. <laughs> no, that's good. That's all good. So uh, so He knows about the big three. So question number one. Yeah. Um, what is your other, well, I guess you could say earth, but outside of planet earth, what's your favorite planet? My favorite planet. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw a YouTube short on this. Oh, there we go. Yesterday. Um, <laughs> my favorite planet. Um, I'm going to say Saturn because of the rings. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Same here. Yeah. Like me and my wife, we're big into space stuff. Oh, and we cool. went a couple years ago to like the Huntsville space museum and all that. Oh yeah. I've seen that. Yeah, it's it's pretty sick. And so we nice. talked about before getting like uh some kind of like um outer space ish type tattoos, like matching tattoos. Oh yeah, that's cool. And so that's yeah, why I told her if, if we did I would get Saturn, but I don't Saturn. know. It's well, yeah, we we're not, we don't know yet. But Okay, okay. So question number two, um yeah. this one's inspired because I took my son to his first baseball game over this past weekend. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it was awesome. He had a great time. And so what is your go to ballpark snack? Oh, go to ballpark snack. Um, let's see. I'd probably have to say a hot dog. Yeah, that's um, a must. Just you know, it's easy to carry to your seat. You know, like you can just put all the condiments on it real quick. Um, and uh, you know, pretty simple to eat. So yeah, and if you got a couple kids too, it's easy because you can have one hand hold. Oh it, yeah, you can like multi, you just like stack that thing right there in your arm. Mm -hmm. You know who Ty Brazel is. Is a Christian. Rapper. Oh yeah, type right. Yeah, he's he does prime time with KB and a yeah. bunch of other stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, I met him in Nashville a couple of years ago at an cool. Andy Mineo concert, and yeah. um, we got a picture together. Well, he was out in the lobby, like where they were doing concession stands and all that. Okay. And I was like, that dude looks just like Ty Brazel. Surely it's not. He, he was just walking around like nobody was saying anything to him. Yeah. So um, I went inside and and I went with my brother and my dad to the concert, and uh, I said, I think Ty Brazel's out there in the lobby. And my brother was like, go back out there and talk to him. So I went out there and there was another dude talking to him. So I just walked up and, you know, he dapped him up and everything. And then I was like, you care if I get a picture? And so we talked for a while. And anyway, so we got the picture. And in the picture, I'm like holding a hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> and so as soon as I sent it to my wife, she was like, yeah, that's cool and everything. But you should have put the hot dog down before, <laughs> before you got the. That's so funny. Like, well. Dude, his music. I love his music. I love uh, uh, Meant for Me. Um is it? It's yeah. not God's plan. What is it? Um, Praying God's, hands. God's no. God's son. Yeah, Lucy, yeah. Lucy, want my soul, but I'm God's son. Yeah. That's a great song. It's great. Yeah, yeah. So I, I actually, you saw him at a concert. I saw him at Winter Jam probably like four, four years ago. I was there too. Town. Were you there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh yeah. They had a youth pastor thing in the back, and he like shared his testimony. Like I think he was involved in like in drug addiction mm -hmm. stuff or whatever. Um, yeah, just really cool testimony. And yeah. he was not that far removed from the drug addiction either. Like he was only. He was doing he was doing like rap then four years ago and it was like six years ago like he had just gotten out of drugs um, yeah 
So like his life turned around quickly and started doing music stuff was that's just an insane story. He's one he's one that I want on this on this podcast at some point. He's a you should get him, bro. Hey. I'm trying. He, hey. What's crazy is I've, I've seen him a couple times, and the first time that I met him when we took the picture with a hot dog. Yeah. The next time I saw him was at Winter Gym, and it had been like two or three years. And I went up to him and was like, "Hey, you know, good, you know, good performance or whatever. Can I get a picture?" And he remembered me from years before. He was like, really? "I know you, don't I?" And I was like, "We met one time a couple of years ago. I had the hot dog, you know." But <laughs> it was the he, hot dog, bro. It <laughs> yeah, was he the hot dog, man. Yeah, he remembered. So, That's so funny. Yeah, that, but it was it was cool how he was just. Cause I'm sure he meets all kinds of people all the time, but just how. He, not only for him to recognize me, but then for him to be like, hey, you know, I've met you before, you know, so it was, it was pretty cool. It kind of took him to another level to me. All right. So I got a quick little story. We got time. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So um, I, there's this artist that I've been following for the last, I don't know, 10 years, 11 years. His name is Mike Mains of the Branches. Mm -hmm. um, I got a tattoo right here. It's his lyrics to one of his songs. And um, so I got, I had seen him a couple of times and I got the tattoo. And then one day I was at a concert up in Cleveland, Tennessee, and uh, he was there, put on this awesome show. Afterwards, I came out and I was like, hey, man, like, just appreciate your music. And I was like, I actually got a tattoo, of, you know, some of your lyrics. And um, he told me, he, like, he looked at it and he's like, you know what? I actually wrote that song a week after I almost committed suicide. I was Dang. like, holy crap. Yeah. And uh, we took a picture that night. And then about a year, year and a half ago, uh, my dad asked me to preach at his church. And whatever whatever I was talking about, I wanted to quote the lyrics to that song. Um, and so I like I just reached out to him on Instagram and I sent him a picture that we took and and, uh, you know, just said, hey, I have, a t I have a tattoo of your lyrics on my arm. Like, I would love to hear the story behind like more of the details of the story because mm -hmm. I'd like to share it in a sermon or whatever. So we emailed back and forth a few times and he actually, like he actually sent me an audio recording of the story and I got to use that um, wow. uh, in the, in the, uh, in the message. So it was really cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. That's cool. So did he, so he remembered, did he remember you when he saw the picture? Did he say? Uh, I, he didn't say, I, you know, I like to think that he did. I like to yeah, think that we'll I say have a memorable face, but yeah, yeah, let's just say that he yeah, did, we'll but he, he, just, did, yeah. he just didn't put in the email. He just he gave you a cell phone number, said anytime. He was like, oh yeah, I know that guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do have his personal email. So well, there you go. There you go. We won't put that on here. Uh, so question number three. So this goes back to music. Um, what is a song that maybe takes you back to childhood? Oh gosh. Oh man. That's a good, that's a good question. The song that takes you back to childhood. Um, okay. So I used to watch the space jam movie oh, like, yeah. all the time and yep. everybody get mm -hmm. up. It's like, <laughs> what's that song actually called? Uh, is it pump up the jam? Maybe. Yeah. 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 Like, um, I think it is pump up the jam. Maybe I think so. Whatever it is like that song takes me back. Like, um, so one of my best, do you remember John Jordan from high school? Like a man of Jordan's like, brother? Yes. Yeah. 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 So, um, I used to go to his house all the time during the summers and, um, I would listen to music that I wasn't allowed to listen at home. Yeah. Uh, so like NSYNC, Backstreet Boys, um, <laughs> like, I thought you were going to come out with something crazy. You said NSYNC. <laughs> yeah, dude. And like, like sometimes like my wife and I will just be like jamming, like we'll just sing acapella. Like one of us just come out and sing like NSYNC or, yeah. you know, um, there's like plenty of like, like pop punk or like rock bands that like, you know, just from the early 2000s, mid 2000s, like, oh yeah. Uh, 2010s, like just, man, we sing all the time. That stuff brings me back to high school and college. So. It's funny that you said that too, because this just this past weekend it was sun uh, Saturday night. We, me and my wife stayed up till two o'clock in the morning, and we were just playing songs back and forth. Like, do you know this one? Do you know this one? And it turned into like, how much of the Jonas Brothers did we know? <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so <laughs> yeah. Funny. I don't even remember how Jonas Brothers got into it, but it was like, and and then it turned into like I remember at Temple that you know they'd give us the little milk cartons when you're in elementary and middle school and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. And on the back of those milk cartons was a picture of the Jonas Brothers. And oh, I really? do you remember Ladaris and Jacquez? Oh, sure, yeah. you probably remember. Yeah, okay. So yeah, yeah. I remember them two were like Jonas Brothers, like, and and I was like, do they like them? Do they not like them? Like I didn't know the way they were talking about them. I was like, are they That's into nice. the Jonas Brothers? Are they not? Yeah. So that was the big three. Um, so let's get into a little bit like of your testimony. Like tell the people about who you are. You know, married life your kids, whatever you feel comfortable sharing. 
dude. If there's one thing about me, um, which if you, you used to go to Rockbridge, you said for a little bit, yeah. Okay, so I am um, I'm the Hope Mobilizer for the Hickson campus, and um, so it's kind of like a volunteer staff thing. I, I really don't not sure all the details on it, but basically, I just participate and help with a lot of local mission stuff in Chattanooga and Hickson. But one of the things that the Rockbridge staff has is they like to keep things 100, which is like, they just like to keep things honest between themselves as a staff and like, and people in the church. So like, that's just kind of, even before I knew that, but that's just kind of how I live, how I live my life. Like, I'm not worried about sharing something, you know, I just, I just tell like it is, man. So um, my testimony is, you know, I've, I've grown up, I'm a pastor's kid my entire life from the time, well, not my entire life, but the, from the time I was about seven or eight, um, my dad became a pastor and he's still a pastor of the same church um, for like the last 20, 23 years. Wow. Um, you know, growing up, uh, I actually just spoke with a student about this the other day, but, you know, growing up like in middle school, but particularly high school, you know, like. God to me was like this genie in a bottle that could grant my wishes. And if I behaved well enough, then he would grant me, you know, my wishes or things I wanted. So for example, um, like I always wanted to do really well in basketball, but I really struggled with understanding my role in the team and, mm -hmm. and just the confidence to play. Um, and so I remember like before games and I would like just, like ask God's forgiveness to like wipe my slate clean for the for oh, the wow. day and you just say, score 30. so I could just so I could get like get good playing time and score points. Yeah. That's yeah. what I did. Wow. And it was crazy. Like it's, I guess that's kind of like karma in some of what, in some of the ways like you might view different religions or whatever and, and beliefs, but, but that's how I viewed God, like this genie that would grant me things. And, but at the same time, it was like, I can live life however I want to, because there's grace. Mm -hmm. And so I remember in high school, just like, um, you know, I dated a few girls um, and just really just pursuing whatever I wanted to rather than, than God. And, you know, I was, cause my whole thought was like, there's grace. So I can live life. Exactly. I can live, like I'm going to hell right now, but like later on and get my life back on track. He's going to forgive me. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, who hasn't mm -hmm. done that? And yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, when I remember the realization that that is like those two things, like you can't believe in grace and live life how you want to. Like when I, when I realized for the first time that those two things were incompatible for someone who claims to follow Jesus, it like wrecked me. Um, I just remember like back in high school, my view of God was so small and yeah. just, you know, even back then, like I would be happy to talk about God, God's plan for my life, all this stuff. But it, when, when it came to Jesus, which is like the differentiator between religions and, and faiths and stuff like um like when it came to jesus it was like no nah, i don't care to talk about jesus like why we gotta talk about jesus all the time like i'm yeah. tired of talking about jesus like kind of awkward yeah like i don't yeah. know like i just felt uncomfortable to talk about jesus but i remember like when i truly gave my life to christ when i was about uh 21 or 22 um like the name of jesus actually like started becoming like a name that i wanted to hear and wanted to talk about um it was just crazy like you know you know is this a family podcast like you have young listeners i'm trying to figure out um, what what i've what i've realized it's like it's mainly 17 to 22 something like that that's the core okay. group okay so um you know for me like i struggled heavily with a pornography addiction for um i mean dude since i the time i was like in eighth grade maybe ninth grade and you know like um, and part of, part of the, the lifestyle that I lived was like, I'm going to, I'm going to just do this stuff now. And later on, I'll just get my life on track whenever I'm ready to like, yeah. try to actually get serious and settle down or whatever. And, um, so, but I remember like when I, when I, when I feel like I really did truly come to Christ, it was kind of in a moment where I was actually talking to Rebecca, uh, my wife, a point, cause she's back that way on the other side of her house. Um, but we were, we were just dating and it had kind of come out that I was struggling with pornography. And, um, so I just remember like, she was really frustrated with me and, mm -hmm. you know, and, but it was in the conversation, like on the phone, uh, during the, during the summer, um, between school that I just had this thought, like for the first time ever, like, you know, I had just been blaming God, like, God, I know this is wrong. I shouldn't do this, but you know, you're going to have to get me out of this 
And so after yeah. a while, oh, like, yeah. after a while, it's not nothing's working. Like this isn't fixed. So God, this is your fault. Like this is on you. Mm-hmm. This, this not, you can't hold me accountable for this. Yeah. And I just remember like one day, like just a, just a thought, um, like Josh, I didn't make you do any of this. You're the one that chose that stuff over me. And in that moment, I could like it was like I got like flashbacks to so many moments where God had, um, uh, He had tried to give me he had given me not tried to he had given me opportunities to say no to sin um but all i wanted was sin like that i didn't want anything to do with god i what i really wanted was sin and that moment when i was about i think i was 22 yeah i was 22 from that moment till now i'm 31 so for the last nine years um like i have seen true sanctification i've seen true like life change um you know like i've seen so much freedom in that area and and, and not like the kind of freedom where like you know it, it's been a couple of weeks but like it's been a long, long time since I've struggled with that. And just, just to the praise and the glory of God. And um, like, he's just worked in my life. So, so many ways and, and everything. So, um, you know, now my wife and I, like we've been missionaries for the last several years and we work with students and um, we, you know, we live off, we live off full support now. And so like, we just, our lives are just, just trusting God <laughs> every <Yeah>. day. <laughs> sometimes like, sometimes it's every day or week to week, but um, man, God has just been so good to me and over the last nine years of my life since I've really kind of started following him. And so, um, yeah, that's just, that's a, that's a, that's just my story my testimony of how, where God's brought me so far. Yeah, so. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. And I think that's, that is a help to the audience out there for sure. I've talked about that before on the podcast. Like I was raised in a Christian home and I think when you're raised in a Christian home, like, you know, the answers technically, but it's like is this stuff real? Like that's where it got to me a couple of years ago to get to the point where in 2020, where I'm like, am I believing this because it's legit because it's real? Or am I just believing this because this is how I was brought up? This is what my parents are telling me, you know, like what, what is, is God really for real? Is Jesus legit? And so you have to find those answers for yourself, you know? And, and when you come to that, and I was actually talking to my sister about that today, it's like, you have to actually put in the work to figure a lot of this stuff out for yourself. You, you can't have the faith of your parents. You know, you have to have faith mm-hmm. for yourself and you living, honestly living off of faith right now, like you said, in the line of work that you're in, that's a, that's a big thing. That's one thing that I feel like God's called me to do is try to build people's faith the best that I can. And I think you're an example of that. That's, that's cool. by the way you're living right now. That's cool, dude. But um, I, I kind of want to touch a little bit on that, the um, pornography piece, because honestly, I was talking to a guy about that the other day and I've not talked about that anything like that on the show before, but we were just talking about how it basically comes down to almost like control in a way, because it, what's the, what's the way I I need to word this? Like when you're able to just get on there and take care of your need right then, and you're not having to worry about another person at all, it, it dehumanizes, you know, women or what, you know, whatever you're looking at to the point where, you know, if I want to go get this fix or whatever, I can just go do it anytime. And I'm not having to put any kind of work in, you know, yeah. and, and it, it goes into so many aspects of your life. You think that it's not affecting anybody except you, but it's affecting yeah. so many different ways. It affects the way you look at people, it affects, you know, your relationships um, and, and even in control in a way, because you're saying sometimes, and this is what me and my buddy were talking about. It's like, you're saying to yourself, like, why is my wife willing to do what's going on? You know, like I was told I'm supposed to wait until I get yeah. married. And then here I am. I waited to get married. And then she's not willing to do what I'm seeing yeah. on the computer. You know what I mean? And then it just yeah. turns into like, OK, so why is she not doing this? And then it just turns into all kinds of issues. And it just puts it definitely creates unreal expectations. Um, yeah. I mean, if you if you look in some of the, like the background and some of the uh, pornography actors and stuff, um, which I have over the years. Um, it's like more sobering. Like it makes people like seem more real, um, when you like hear their stories. Um, but like, I mean, all of that is just straight up acting. Like the women don't enjoy it. Um, it's just all acting for the camera. Um, you know, I, I'll actually really do appreciate the fact that we've kind of taken this turn real quick to talk about pornography stuff because um, honestly, like it's not talked enough about. It's no. like one of the, it's like one of those things where everybody knows everyone wants to struggle with it, but no one's going to talk about it, and not a lot of people talk about it from the pulpit. Like 
just yeah. the rare occasion that actually pastors know how to talk about it from the pulpit. And I'll be honest, like there's not a lot of people that actually know like how to help someone work through this because, you know, what ends up, it, it ends up starting like maybe a kid, like curiosity, like, mm -hmm. you know, for me, um, I didn't really understand the process of puberty. Like mm -hmm. I did not understand like the different changes that were going to happen to my body. My dad would talk to me about it, you know, or whatever. Um, but I just was so confused. And like, when I say confused, bro, I'm talking about from like eighth grade to maybe like 18 for 10 years. Look, because it's almost like, at least for me, the way I, and, and if my dad's listening to this, it's no disrespect to any, any parents or anything like that, but yeah. it's almost it's like, it's almost like you're, it's just expected. Like, it's just, you'll just figure it out or it's just understood yeah. that this is what happens. And it's like, it, it puts me in a place too, where I'm like, I want to be able to explain to my kids these things, even though they're tough, situa tough things to talk about and they're awkward to talk about. It's like you want them to be prepared for when these things happen, that it's not all just a shock. And then I'll just yeah. go to school and ask my buddy, you know, what's going on. Or you'll just hear what they're talking about. And you're like, OK, that's what's going on. This is what I need to yeah. start doing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, go ahead. So, you know, it's just it's just crazy because like, you know, well, for one thing, if if us as parents don't have the conversation with our kids, two things will happen. Um, they're going to have the conversation with their friends because their friends mm -hmm. is gonna sh are going to show it to them. And their um, kids are, and the, their friends are morons. <laughs> yeah, their friends are morons. <laughs> yeah. um, or, you know, uh, research from Barna talks about how um, that screens disciple just from all the content creators and things that you can find on the Internet. Like our screens, our PCs, our laptops, like our tablets, our phones, like they actually disciple us and, and train us and teach us. And so, like, I remember the first time that I ever actually understood what's supposed to happen in sex was from a, porno a pornographic image and like that's ingrained into my mind i can still see it now like um right. it's just crazy because you know my parents did the best that they could but still like this i was just so confused and um and like my dad um you know he he did the best that he could try to have these conversations but um, one thing I was going to say before is that, you know, what starts as either curiosity, like I just didn't understand like my body and how it would change and stuff. And so like, I was just trying to figure out stuff mm -hmm. um, like, and then also when I was younger, uh, a lot of, actually a lot of people don't know this and I don't mind sharing this, um, but I was, um, mm, hang on. I got to think about how I want to say this actually. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use the word sexually abused lightly. Um, so I